The Lord has a sense of humor. (laughs) Our scripture reading today is Psalm 40. I waited patiently. Sorry, I'll try not to pop my peas quite so much. I waited patiently for the Lord to help me. And he turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the pit of despair, out of the mud and the mire. He set my feet on solid ground and steadied me as I walked along. He has given me a new song to sing, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see what he has done and be amazed. They will put their trust in the Lord. Oh, the joys of those who trust in the Lord, who have no confidence in the proud or in those who worship idols. Oh, Lord, my God, you have performed many wonders for us. Your plans are too numerous to list. You have no equal. If I tried to recite all your wonderful deeds, I would never come to the end of them. You take no delight in sacrifices or offerings. Now that you have made me listen, I finally understand you don't require burnt offerings or sin offerings. Then I said, look, I have come, as is written about me in the scriptures. I take joy in doing your will, my God, for your instructions are written On my heart, I have told all your people about your justice. I have not been afraid to speak out, as you, O Lord, well know. I have not kept the good news of your justice hidden in my heart. I have talked about your faithfulness and saving power. I have told everyone in the great assembly of your unfailing love and faithfulness. Lord, don't hold back your tender mercies from me. Let your unfailing love and faithfulness always protect me. For troubles surround me. Too many to count. My sins pile up so high I can't see my way out. They outnumber the hairs on my head. The Lord has a sense of humor. I have lost all courage. Please, Lord, rescue me. Come quickly, Lord, and help me. May those who try to destroy me be humiliated and put to shame. May those who take delight in my trouble be turned back in disgrace. Let them be horrified by their shame. For they said, aha, we've got him now. But... May all who search for you be filled with joy and gladness in you. May those who love your salvation repeatedly shout, The Lord is great! As for me, since I am poor and needy, let the Lord keep me in his thoughts. You are my helper and my savior, O my God. Do not delay. The word of God for the people of God. Brother Jim was just preaching the scripture. I love it. Thank you, Jim. Almost six years ago, I stood before you to offer my first message to Hope Church. And it was a message that was titled Chapter 37. And the whole premise around that particular message was uh, to help us to understand we were entering into the 37th chapter of Hope's story together and to celebrate what that might look like as God worked through us and and lived through us. So now fast forward six years, and I wanted to make sure that I I tried to align my, my first message with my last message. And so I started with the title, and I recognized that actually my computations way back then were wrong. We were actually entering into the 38th chapter, and now we are ending the 43rd chapter in Hope's story. So my hope is is that six years from now, if you're looking back and there's not some kind of small computation that can be uh, linked back to me, you know, that's that's kind of the hope. But, But this is a time in which we celebrate our stories with one another. It's hard to believe that just two months ago, we all started the journey of learning about the transitions that we are all going to have to endure together. 
starting with the announcement of my appointment to Broomfield, and then just a couple weeks later, Pastor Stephanie's announcement about going to the land. And these last two months have been that, that season where it's really slow, but at the same time, it's really fast when you look back on it. But it's also a time that's been bittersweet. And this is a bittersweet moment standing before you today on my last Sunday as we wrap up 40, the 43rd chapter in Hope's story. And it's bitter because of the sadness that I will no longer be on this journey with you as your lead pastor. Bitter because of the relationships that have been established, the trust that has been built, the love and the life that has been shared. Bitter, quite honestly, because I have come to enjoy just preaching two messages on a Sunday, and now I'm going to have to start preaching four. (laughs) I understand that there are some people that have been listening uh, from Broomfield to the messages, so if you're listening online, I just had to use that as kind of a tension breaker. But it's also sweet, and it's also sweet for almost the very same reasons. It's sweet because God has granted us this season to be able to share our lives together. It's sweet because without this season, my life and the life of my family would not have been blessed by you and all that you have brought into our lives. Sweet because of the work that we have done together and the ways that God's Spirit continues to flow through you and the way God's Spirit continues to flow through this place. So throughout the last couple of months, I have been reflecting on what to share with all of you this morning. And I struggled, as we often do in these times, for finding the right words, but sometimes there are no right words when we find ourselves parting from one another. And as I was doing that search and as I was thinking through what I wanted to share as a a typical kind of postmodern person, you know, we kind of go back to our TV shows and things that that give us that uh, inspiration. And I was reminded of one of my favorite TV shows, which is MASH. (laughs) Were you going to say MASH? (laughs) Everybody remember MASH? Remember the final episode of MASH? Yes. Still the, the most watched episode, television episode in history. And if you don't remember... Here are the last few minutes. It sounded like my cab is here. Yeah. So, <clears throat> come on, I'll give you a ride up there. I know how tough it is for you to say goodbye, so I'll say it. Maybe you're right. Maybe we will see each other again. But just in case we don't, I want you to know how much you've meant to me. I'll never be able to shake you. Whenever I see a big pair of feet or a cheesy mustache, I'll think of you. Whenever I smell month-old socks, I'll think of you. The next time somebody nails my shoe to the floor, when somebody gives me a martini that tastes like lighter fluid, I miss you. I'll miss you a lot. I can't imagine what this place would have been like if I hadn't found you here.
that it got me going on this journey. I want you to know that I will miss you. I thank God that I won't be able to shake you. Every time I see or hear the word hope, I'm going to think of you. Every time I see a fire truck, especially at a church, I'll definitely remember hope. <laughs> and I was the cause of uh, at least one of those. Uh, and every time that I think of each one of you, I will smile. My heart will be filled. I cannot imagine what my life or the life of my family would have been like had not we known you. It's hard when we part. I also don't want to leave it there. Because today, to me, it's not a goodbye. It's not even a see you later. Really, today, in many ways, is a Godspeed. It's a blessing as we start new journeys, new chapters in our lives. So today, I want to celebrate the journey that we have been on together and the story that God has written through us and the story that God will continue to write through you, Hope Church. And so in true God fashion, God led me to the 40th Psalm. Let me give you a little bit of context. The, the psalm is a psalm from David, and it speaks about the difficulty and challenges that he finds himself in, the, the mud and the muck and the mire of life. Not really a passage you would expect during one's last service, but when you really look at the psalm, it's a psalm that shares with us what it means to trust God, even when life is messy. It's a psalm that celebrates the faithfulness of God and the security we find through God's presence in our lives. The beauty of the scriptures, you've heard me say this over and over again, is that it is the living word of God. The word that we read is not only a word that points us to some historical point in time, but it speaks to us exactly where we are today. It is a word that meets us where we are and continues to live and breathe in us and through us. So as I read the psalm, there were some verses that spoke to me and gave words that I would like to share with you this morning. And right there in that first one is in verse 3, where David says, He has given me a new song to sing, a hymn of praise to God. We've used that language before here at Hope, that we all have a song to sing, and God has written that song into each and every one of our hearts. He has created each and every one of you with a purpose for this world. He has created hope for a special and unique purpose as well. We all have a song to sing. And over the last six years, we have discovered what that song sounds like when we sing it together. We've been reminded that we exist to transform the world by making disciples of Jesus Christ. We sing the song when we faithfully live into our values of abundant life. The value of, of discipleship coming along one, uh, alongside each other and, and pointing each other to God and to one another, the value of meaningful community, the value of our future generations, our younger generations, the value of servanthood, what it means to give ourselves away. God has given us a new song to sing. And when we sing it together with all of the beautifully unique gifts and talents that God has created within us, this community and the world around us will hear a song that points them to a God that loves them beyond measure. So friends, my encouragement to you is to keep singing that song. Keep singing God's song and let the music of God's heart continue to flow through you and into the world. And as you sing, friends, no matter what, as you sing, another encouragement, do not lose your sense of wonder. Right there in verse 5, David says, O Lord, my God, you have performed many wonders for us. Your plans for us are too numerous to list. You have no equal. If I tried to recite all your wonderful deeds, I would never come to the end of them. Oftentimes in our lives, we have let increasing cynicism, and in some ways even the demystifying scientism, erode our sense of wonder. We've been content to, to relegate wonderment to the experiences of the young and the naive. And it's true that in youth, we are much more open to the wonders of this world. Have you ever tried to take a puppy for a walk? It's not always the easiest thing. It takes forever. Not only does he resist the tug of the leash, but it must stop and pounce on every leaf on the sidewalk, investigate every stick in the path, track every bug that crawls along, and of course smell every inch of the earth. And if you take a toddler, that's almost the same thing, you know, without the leash, of course. All is new. All is 
wonderful. There's this sense of wonder that sometimes we lose even within the life of the church. Do not lose that sense of wonder. One of my favorite passages to demonstrate this is from The Great House of God by Max Lucado. And he writes, why did God do it? A shack would have, would have sufficed, sufficed, but he gave us a mansion. Did he have to give the birds a song and the mountains a peak? Was he required to put stripes on the zebra and the hump on the, ha- on the camel? Would we have known the difference had he made the sunsets gray instead of orange? Why wrap creation in such splendor? Why go to such trouble to give such gifts? Why do you? You do the same. I've seen you searching for a gift. I've seen you stalking the malls and walking the aisles. I'm not talking about the obligatory gifts. I'm not describing the last-minute purchase of drugstore perfume on the way to a birthday party. Forget blue light specials and discount purchases. I'm talking about that extra special person and that extra special gift. Why do you do it? You do it so the eyes will pop. You do it so the heart will stop. You do it to hear those words of disbelief. You did this for me? That's why you do it. And that's why God did it. Next time a sunrise steals your breath or a meadow of flowers leaves you speechless, remain that way. Say nothing and listen as heaven whispers. Do you like it? I did it just for you. Wonder. That sense of awe. It's so vital to our faith. Even in the messiness of life, even when things aren't working out exactly how you had planned, even when it's hard to understand, even when you are in the midst of making that difficult decision within your life, whatever that may be, still find time to wonder. Look for something new. And thank God for the ways in which he continues to make all things new. Hold on to his promise that, that, that light overcomes darkness, that death is overcome by life, that he is always making something new. And I'm struck by wonder and awe when I reflect upon the song that rises up within the heart of Hope Church. When there is a need in our church and our community, the ways in which you come alongside one another in times of tragedy and grief and personal and communal struggles. I stand in wonder of this community's faithfulness and support in helping us, I don't know if you know this, but really helping to start two new faith communities. We all know about Pastor Stephanie and, and, and her going out to the land and, and the work that is being done there and the wonderful ways in which we are being able to send her forward. And next week is going to be her last Sunday with us. But did you know that Hope also created space for Lauren Boyd to launch and move into full-time ministry with the new church of B3, a new faith, faith community in Denver? That's a sense of wonder for me that you see that God continues to do new things and you create space for God to do, new, do those new things in you and through you. Wonder is recognizing the ways that God is doing all those new things in all the circumstances and situations that life offers. And I stand in wonder and awe of the many ways that God has worked through this faith family. So friends, don't lose your sense of wonder, your sense of awe in all that God is doing in you and through you. When you wonder, you begin to sense the fullness and glory of the awesome God that we serve. That as you wonder, you will continue to see where God is moving. And you'll continue to hear God's voice calling you out into the world. And that leads me to the last one of verses 9 and 10, which tell us, I have told all your people about your justice. I have not been afraid to speak out as you, O Lord, well know. I have not kept the good news of your justice hidden in my heart. I have talked about your faithfulness and saving power. I have told everyone in the great assembly of your unfailing love and faithfulness. When you sing the song of justice, the community hears. The world hears. When you hear of a need, you have a heart to be able to meet that need. And that, friends, is good news. And that is God working God's good news through you. I will always take with me the... uh, Advent and Lenten mission projects that we have done over the years. 
Some of you remember over 100 pairs of work boots that were collected during a, a Lenten season. You might remember this chancel area filled with blessing baskets during Advent to be able to come alongside the poor and the homeless among us. Just recently, the over 60 restoration bags for survivors of human trafficking, hundreds of items given for day laborers within our community. The response to the needs of our homeless through the peanut butter and jelly ministry every Friday at Civic Center Park. The response to the needs of the impoverished in, in Greenwood Village with the creation of the Village Resource Center. The South Medical Equipment Loan Closet. I want to make sure I always get that right. Created to respond to medical needs of those who do not have the resources to purchase expensive medical equipment. Your support of the Centus Counseling Office at Hope that provides essential mental health services to children and individuals and couples and families in our community. Your response to Imagine No Malaria. Do you remember Imagine No Malaria campaign a few years back? And we were raising money to be able to buy nets. Our goal, I think, was 4000 and we got over $14,000, which is 14, over 1,400 nets for people that needed them. I remember we still, we still have our bowl, the bowl that we bought at the auction that was made, by, I think, by Kellen. Kellen Pape made that bowl. It's still in our, in our house. This is what the song of God sounds like when we support those who go on mission work to Kenya and other parts of the world, to La Puente, singing a song of justice to the world. We have good news to share, friends. Keep sharing it. Keep coming alongside one another. Keep coming alongside the weak and the marginalized and the poor and the voiceless and the lonely and the hurting and the misunderstood and the castaways and the broken. Keep drawing the circle wide. Reaching out your heart and your hands to all of God's beloved. Telling the world of God's unfailing love and God's unfailing faithfulness. So as we end this chapter in Hope's story together, and as we look ahead to new chapters... May we not forget that no matter where our stories are being written, that God is the author of our story and that we are the storytellers. Tell the story. Tell the story of God's good news and continue to sing God's song of love and grace for all the world. I am so grateful that you have invited me and my family to be a part of the story that God is writing in you. My story and the story of my family is forever changed by you being in it. I love you more than anything else. God loves you beyond measure. Don't ever forget that. Godspeed. Amen. Thank you. invite our ushers to come forward as we prepare ourselves to continue the good work that God is doing in, through, and among us. Would you pray with me? Holy Spirit, we sit in the midst of transition, and yet we invest. We invest our trust and our time and our resources, knowing that all good things come through you. Amen. Oh,